When I was a, a child, my grandfather used to read me bedtime stories every night. And uh, it was almost always the same story, Jack and the Beanstalk. But he was such a good storyteller that every night I would wait excitedly to hear once again Jack and the Beanstalk and hear him say fee fi fo fum as he introduced the giant into the story. Well, we all love a good story, and in today's Gospel, Matthew 21, verse 28 to 32, we see Jesus, the master storyteller, in action. Some of the greatest novels and movies of all time are always stories, great stories, like Gone with the Wind, or Titanic, which was one of the best-selling movies of all time. Actually, Titanic brought in more teenage girls than any other movie in history. Why? Because it had a great story. Historical, intriguing sinking of the Titanic, but also tragedy, romance, action, redemption. It had everything. And that's what made it a great story and drew in the crowds to see. One of the key ways of Grasping the Bible, understanding the Bible, is to find the story. When we lose the story, the Bible can become very difficult to read. If you start from Genesis and read it from cover to cover, often we lose our way. We hit Leviticus and it's like pages of laws and we lose our way. But if you find the story in the Bible, you will not want to put the Bible down. And there's a secret to that because there's 14 narrative books in the Bible. And here they are. If one follows those 14 books, you get the story of the Bible. You get the storyline, the thread that goes right through the Bible. And all of a sudden, the Bible becomes an exciting story, and we get it, and we find it exciting and easy to read. The Gospel today, in verse 28, begins with the line, A man had two sons. Now, for the Hebrew listeners of the first century, this was a clue that a great story lay ahead. Stories of brothers, stories of conflict and jealousy and forgiveness, competition. And straight away, they would have thought of people like Cain and Abel, Jacob and his brother Esau, Isaac and Ishmael, Joseph and his brothers. A great story lay ahead. By grasping their attention, Jesus draws them into a very important teaching moment. And the central message of this gospel today is the Father in heaven wants true commitment when we do his will and not just lip service. One of the key words and phrases of today's gospel is in verse 29. The first son says, I will not go, but then he changes his mind. Metamelomai, metamelomai in Greek, which is like a metanoia, a change of direction, a change of mind, a change of will, a conversion. This metamelomai, this change of mind, this conversion, this change of direction, we can see it delights the heart of God, like in the prodigal son story, when he sees his son or daughter coming back towards him, God delights. And God delights when we do his will, not just with our lips, but honor him with our hearts in true commitment.
Isaiah 29, verse 13. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. To do God's will, to obey, the word obedience does not have good press in the 21st century. It rings very negatively for people. And yet it's a path of freedom, as John Paul II used to say. And a great philosopher once said, dependency that comes from obedience can be slavery if you're dependent on something that's inferior to you. But if you're dependent and obeying something that's superior to you, you are set free. And that's why obeying God and doing His will is a path of freedom. If we want our bodies to survive, we know that we have to eat food to survive. But on a spiritual level, we also have to eat spiritual food so we can survive spiritually. And this is very important in the spiritual battle. Three times in the Gospels, Jesus speaks of food. And the first two, I think you probably guessed them, but the third one, often we forget that Jesus has said this. The first food given by Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 is, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Word of God is a true food for us. Second one is in John chapter 6, verse 54. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, the Eucharist. And the third one is the will of God in chapter 4 in St. John, verse 34. When the disciples come back from the village after Jesus has spoken to the Samaritan woman, Jesus says, I have a food that you don't know about. My Food is to do the will of my Father in heaven. The Word of God feeds our faith. The Eucharist feeds our love, our charity. But the will of God feeds our hope. It gives us direction, it gives us strength, it gives us vision, and it gives us strength to go on. We spoke about the word metamelomai, but that comes from the word melo, which means cares, emotions, and it's a calling to move beyond, to go beyond our emotions, to go beyond our cares into another realm where the will of God can take us. It's a challenge that God is giving to us. Many years ago, I took a youth group, little children, to Disney World. And one of the rides we were on with all the children was called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, I think was the name of it. And it was a kiddies ride, innocent enough, but we would come to a big wall. And as you're about to hit the wall, the wall would open. And then you come to another wall. And just when you think you're gonna hit the wall, a door in the wall would open. And that little ride made me think of today's message. Life will lead us to walls. Life will lead us to dead ends where we just don't know what to do next. And that's where God's will comes in. But often doing His will will seem like God is asking us to do something that's humanly impossible, that humanly does not make sense. There's a wonderful example of this in the Old Testament in chapter 14 in the book of Exodus. Moses has led the people of Israel out of Egypt, right to the edge of the Red Sea. But they're trapped. There's mountains on one side, 
the sea in front of them, and the army of Pharaoh is closing in fast. People begin to panic, they begin to doubt God's will. And Moses says, just be still and let the Lord act. His pathway will lead us to the sea, he says a few lines later. A place that we never expected the pathway to appear. A path and a road opens up. Lord, teach us to today's gospel, this message that sometimes we go down the wrong path, but our change of direction is precious in your eyes. To say yes to your will, to obey your will, to come back towards you delights your heart. And to step out and do your will can open doors and pathways that we never thought possible. 